Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have a sublimation compilation for home decor for you today. Don't forget to hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Let's get started. The first sublimation project we have for you today is sublimation on a core doormat. Let's see. So this is how they came out of the printer. They turned out good. I'm happy with the size. And then I am just going to take a plain doormat from Target. I'm trying to remember how much I paid for this. Maybe $8. They're not very expensive. They seem to have them all the time. Just with the other doormats, they're just the plain doormats. And I love these things. I have so many of them for different holidays, so I love being able to make my own now. This is the third one that I have sublimated successfully. And it's the Room Essentials brand at Target. First thing I'm gonna do is try to just clean it up a little bit with a lint roller because it's got, you know, kind of loose fibers all over. I kind of want the cleanest um, image that I can get on it. And then I line up my sheets. I actually um, take the time to measure the sides because last the last rug I had to cut because it was off-centered and it was driving me crazy. So then I start using my heat tape to tape this thing down. And I tape and tape and tape and tape and tape it. I forgot how things do not like to stick to this rug at all, which is one reason why I have never attempted using stencils with a Cricut because it just sounds like a nightmare. It's just so bumpy and rough, the texture of it. So I'm just doing the best I can, just putting tape everywhere. And um, in hindsight, I should have cut um, on the side of the C or on the side of the ladybug and tried to get them closer together. I kind of forgot about the spacing on the margins of the paper. And then I'm going to go in and sublimate. Um, what I use is 400 for two minutes. So I set it to 60 seconds and then... I hit it twice in each location. I just feel like 60 seconds isn't enough, so I try two minutes. And that's what it looks like after two minutes um, coming through the sublimation paper. So I'm gonna do it for my second part here for two minutes. And the last two mats that I have tried um, turned out good, but they were kind of faded. Um, not enough color, not enough vibrancy. So I went in after I made them and kind of made them more bright with like paint pens and a little acrylic paint. This time I'm going to try a different technique and see if I don't have to do that. So two minutes on each section. So that took me six minutes. And I think we're ready for the reveal. Let's see what we have. Turned out really nice. The only problem is that space there between the sea and the ladybug. And of course, I'm a perfectionist and I'm like, oh no, what did I do? And then I'm like, it's really not that bad. I can probably fix it. So what I did is I went in here in a little bit and you'll see what I did. So I'm going to, this is my secret weapon. I'm going to try this. It's Krylon um, Crystal Clear Acrylic Flat. And I'm just going to spray the sublimation with this to try to bring out the colors. I discovered this technique um, um, doing reverse canvases, sublimating on plain canvases, and it was real faint. But when I sprayed it with a couple coats of this, it brought the colors out really bright. And it is working. I'm so excited. So I kind of spray all over to seal it, give it another good coating. See how the colors have gotten darker? It works really good. A secret weapon. Then I'm like, 
that spacing's drove me crazy, so I went in with a black paint pen and painted on three legs to try to make it look like it was spaced a little bit better. And this is the final result. I put it out. Um, I had an Easter welcome mat, and this has replaced it. I think it turned out really good. And then just to show you um, the other two that I've made, this is the one that I made for Easter. I did a Ray Dunn inspired, and I made that truck on Canva and put carrots in the back. And this is the one that I did for St. Patrick's Day. It was also a Ray Dunn inspired one. Home sweet home. What do you guys think? The next project we have is sublimation on a wood sign that I got at the dollar spot at Target. Again, I'm gonna try to go on the white side. I think that will sublimate better. And this is my Hello Spring sign. So I am just trying to line it up. It did not print evenly on the paper, so it's a little off. So I'm just kind of measuring it to try to center it because once you have it on there, there's no going back. All right, so I'm gonna use my heat tape and I am gonna tape this image down. And here's my lesson learned. I'm covering it, not with just a little bit of copy paper. Like I'm covering it with a lot of copy paper. So four sheets of copy paper down. And then I'm like, okay, it's time to sublimate. And then I'm like, I don't even know where the image is because I have it so buried in paper. <laughs> and then I'm like, I do not know if this is gonna work, but 400 degrees for 60 seconds again. And I'm scared, y'all. I'm scared at this point. So I take off the copy paper. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to see. And the paper looks weird. Like, it looks distorted. And I'm like really scared at this point. And I'm just like, oh boy, what am I going to find under here? And it looked good good it looked exactly like the image was supposed to at first I thought there was ghosting and then I remembered there were shadows on the original picture and then I'm like this thing is covered in water so I guess that you know the sublimation brought the water out from the wood so I'm kind of like trying to dry off the water and then I'm like oh it is like bowed it's not flat anymore it caused the water to come out of the wood and it like warped it so here's my plan to fix it. I add some paper to the back and then I just press the back for a little bit and push down to see if I can fix the bowing problem. And hey, that worked. So crisis averted. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in again with the clear flat acrylic and I am going to Try to bring out those colors and seal my design. And it looks really good. I, I at first really thought that there was um, some ghosting, but then I, I reviewed my image. This was a pre-made um, sign on Canva. So I don't think I can really share it because I did not create it. Um, and then I am, I think it needs a little extra. It just had the string and I'm like, that's not gonna work, it needs something. I didn't really want to do a bow on it or add any flowers to it. So I'm like, wood beads, for sure. That's what it needs. So I got these um, natural raw beads um, off of Amazon and I can post a link below. I got like a variety pack that's got like three different sizes, maybe four and I love them. They are so nice. And I just string them with a giant needle I have left around from something. And then I am tied off the strings and I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to make sure that those knots do not come undone. And there we go. And now, oh, it turned out really good. I really like that it's white. I wish the other sign was still white but lesson learned for sure there. And the wood beads on the sign holder look great. What do you guys think? 
Next up is sublimation on a glass cutting board that I got at Dollar Tree to make it into a hot plate. Learn how to do sublimation onto Oracle vinyl to make these Dollar Tree cutting boards amazing. So I've never done this before guys. So first thing I'm gonna do is take the little feet off the cutting board. They're sticky and so the sticky can I think be reused but it left lots of gunk behind. So I'm using some Goo Gone. I probably spent too long doing this and I'm trying to scrape it off and um, get any residue off. So the cutting boards at Dollar Tree, they have two different ones. They have the square and the circle and they are a smooth glass on one side and they're like a rough glass on the other. And I want the smooth to be on the top, I think, with just kind of reverse of how they're set up to be used, just because I think it'll be prettier. So I finally got that all off. So I have my mat for my easy press. I'm just using some parchment paper I picked up at Dollar Tree and I am laying it down. I, I don't have any alcohol, so I'm using hand sanitizer to try to get any kind of residue off of the cutting board. So I went to Michael's and I bought Oracle white vinyl because I've heard that you can sublimate on this and that it will get the image will go all the way through. So that's what we're going to try here. So I measured my cutting boards and I put the dimensions into Cricut. You know, it's super easy to do shapes on there. So I just did a square and you know what? I had it in there upside down. I'm so used to doing HTV. This is the proper way to do it. <laughs> Label down. So try again. Don't worry. I do get to reuse that scrap. <laughs> So I'm just going to save my extra. I'm going to peel it away from the mat. I don't really want to use any um, transfer tape or anything. I don't think I really need to. I'm just going to try to pull it off like a big sticker. Okay, so sticky side up and I am going to attach it to the rough side of the cutting board. So I just kind of line it up. I almost get perfect. I'm just using my little Cricut scraper to make sure it's down. There was a little tiny bit of overhang, but not too bad. So this is an image I found on Canva and I have like an aqua blue um, kitchen and I know that doesn't look aqua blue, but sublimation is kind of weird. Um, it will come up duller colors than you're expecting. So I'm just trying to cut it and line it up. I made it a tiny bit bigger than my vinyl, but probably not big enough and I'm trying to avoid having like white lines over on the side okay so I got my setup going on here the first thing you're supposed to do is go ahead and put your easy press on there and melt the vinyl get it all gooey and you can see it like takes on the texture of the back of the board so then I'm going to carefully try to attach my sublimation paper and you don't have to do a reverse image because it comes straight through. So no flipping like you do normally with sublimation. So I went 400 for one minute and then I wanna look at it, but it is scalding hot. So I'm trying to figure out a way. I'm trying to figure out a way <laughs> to flip this over and see if anything's came through yet. I know it's too early and then I just give up. So I go ahead and do another minute and I'm like, okay, yeah, I really want to look at it. I'm going to find some way to flip it without burning myself. And wow, look at that. The image came all the way through the vinyl and it looks so pretty. I'm trying to get good light to show you. I'm struggling, struggling here. My camera's falling over. Okay. So it turned out really pretty, but I've heard that you're supposed to do it for two and a half minutes. So I'm like, uh, I'm not sure if it's really done. Let me flip it back over and do it for like another 30 seconds. And that's what I do. And I don't think it really changed anything. I think it kind of comes out the same. And then I take it to the sink and I scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. So I soaked it in water and pulled the paper off because the sublimation paper is stuck. 
And then I scrubbed it with like a wet paper towel and I thought I got everything off, but I didn't. There was still some residue. So I went over it with uh, just a, like a wet wipe and then a paper towel and got all the residue off. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, ad this adhesive cork that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's exactly the right width. So I'm kind of using that as a guide on the other one, but yeah, it's not gonna count with this X-Acto blade. So scissors to the rescue and it's adhesive. So it'll be insulating for, you know, the hot plate and it'll just stick right on and it will look nice and it'll cover up the vinyl on the bottom of the hot plate. And so I'm just gonna kind of lay it on. So sticky side up, sit it on there and I did not get it on there straight or I cut it wrong, but it is close enough. Not bad for my first try. So I'm doing a little trimming. I had a little hanging over and sand that off. And wow, I am like in awe of how beautiful it is. I put my little feet back on and I love it. I had to run and show my entire family what I made. Look at how beautiful it is. Ah. Uh, I love this cutting board. I think I can leave it out all the time, but I made it specifically for spring, but it's so pretty. Oh, I love it. Okay. Up next is sublimation and reverse canvas. Did you know you could sublimate on a canvas? I don't know. Okay, on to the second one. This one went way smoother. What I did is I'm just cutting again um, the canvas off. I cut on the outside of the staples. I leave all the staples in there and then I get it off of the frame and then I use scissors just to cut the edges off. And you don't have to be exact with that at all. You've got room when you go to put it on your frame. And this one um, is I designed on Canva too. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow by Audrey Hepburn. I love that quote by her. I love Audrey Hepburn. So I'm doing 400 degrees for one minute. I had to move it. And the tea, I, I must have like not moved it over far enough. So I just cut the tea out and put it back on there. Do it for a minute and voila, fixed it. <laughs> so then I'm going to spray that with my acrylic and dry it. Look how it brings out that black. Turned out really good. So what I'm doing different on this one is I just am not using the Easy Press mat. What I have underneath of me is cardboard and then wood. And so it actually sustained the heat. And I thought that this would cause less wrinkling because the, the canvas is just so big. I've worked with small canvases before and I've never had the trouble with the wrinkling. And so again, I'm just going in with my Waverly Antique Wax and just giving it a light one coat paint on all sides. And these are gonna be my frames that go on top of my spring pictures. And the technique called reverse canvas. And I am making a mess of my workstation. Hang them. All right, so this is my second one. It was not wrinkled, and so it went right together. Got it all stapled on there, and I'm just measuring and putting a little twine hanger on it. I did two of them, and this is how the reverse canvas turned out. What do you guys think? Next up is sublimation on pillows, pillowcase, and even a stuffed pillow that I got at Dollar General. Clearly I need parchment paper. This is messy. <laughs> so here is my second cover that I have left over from this package from Amazon. And again, I will link the link to these pillowcases where you can get them from Amazon. And this is an image that I designed on Canva. It's land that I love. What I did is I took a silhouette of the United States. I made it navy. And then I put stars, white and red stars on there. All the places my family has lived. We lived in Missouri. And 
we then we moved to Philadelphia. We got married when we lived in Philadelphia. We moved back to Missouri, had our son, and now we live in Florida. So I love how I was able to personalize it. And whenever you're making stuff like that, that's one of the fun things about it is that you can personalize it. So 400 for one minute. I'm being very careful about having my cover sheet inside for bleed out. And I'm lining up the United States. And I found a, uh, I found a free printable for this, but it wasn't available anymore. So it kind of gave me the idea of um, something that I can make. And then I thought, why not personalize it with my own stars? And so I love how that turned out. And I made the red star where we live now, which is Florida. All right, so I have, I want to put love at the bottom. So land that I love. And I just love how this turned out. It turned out so cute. So I'm not really measuring. I'm kind of just eyeballing it and um, tape it down pretty good. Cover it with my copy paper. And you don't have to use copy paper. You can use butcher paper. You can use parchment paper. There's so many different kinds of any kind of cover sheet that you can use. I just have lots of co copy paper and I find that it works really good for bleed out. And I'm just giving that a quick press, trying to get the wrinkles out. And isn't that cute? I love how that turned out. And I'm kind of seeing how far down I went so that I can do the same thing on the other side. So, what I did is when I designed these on Canva, I downloaded them and then I print them out and I flipped them horizontally before I printed them. It's kind of like an iron-on image where you know you have to reverse the image. 400 for one minute on each one of these. So we got the words. I'm moving my cover sheet down, that, the sheet that's in between my pillowcase. And just lining up the United States again and taping it down. It's almost exactly the same size as my um, Easy Press. And so I have to be really careful to get my Easy Press on there like exactly right because I want to get both sides of the country and nothing cut off. And it worked out perfectly. All right, so we're going in with the last words on this one. And then next up, we're gonna try a different kind of pillow. So. Covering this with a cover sheet, 400 for one minute. And I got a little bit of scorching on the United States. Do you see that line there? So I'm trying to get it out. And I get, I don't know, I guess because I went over it twice or I didn't have it protected well enough. I'm hoping that it improves, but you can see that on there. So I have another blank eight by eight. 18 by 18 pillow so I'm just putting that in there and zipping it shut and pillow number two is done okay the third pillow is going to be a total experiment I totally don't know if this is going to work so first I'm covering my mat with parchment paper and I got this pillow the other day at Dollar General for five dollars the reason I got it is because it's 100% polyester. It's the color cream that I wanted, and I thought it might work for sublimation. The problem is, is there's no zipper, so I would have to like re-sew it to unstuff it. So I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna try to sublimate with the pillow stuffed. Never done this before. Five dollar experiment coming right up. <laughs> and this is an image I just searched for um, free printables and I found this free printable and I will share the link to this printable so that you could get it as well and I'm just covering it with a sheet of copy paper and I'm applying pressure trying to keep even pressure 400 for one minute and my next step here is I had to cut it because it was too big 
So I'm kind of lining it up like a puzzle piece and taping that on before I take the other sheet off. So I'll get it on there just right, my, my remaining part of the image. And oh, I'm so excited, it actually worked. Look how good that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna finish taping down the rest of the image and I'm gonna protect that because I don't want it to scorch like the United States did in that last pillow. So again, I'm going in with my Easy Press and the only thing I'm doing different is I'm pushing down even pressure, which I don't normally have to do with the flat surfaces. And there we go, God bless America. I think that turned out so cute. You can see like the um, iron marks, but I'm thinking that that will go away with time. Okay, so the other side, I got a different image. This is another free printable that I will link and it is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I thought that'd be really cute. I'm cutting it out kind of wacky because I want it to be like a puzzle piece that I can put back together. Because again, it's bigger than my nine by nine easy press. So I just kind of cut it in half. So I'm gonna do the top part first and I'm just kind of thinking that it's centered and giving that a good tape down. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cover it with copy paper. I'm gonna go in at 400 for one minute while applying pressure the whole time. And then I'm gonna line up my puzzle piece, put my second half of the image on with my sublimation paper. So sublimation involves sublimation ink. You have to have a special printer and special paper. I was really lucky and already had the printer, so I just converted it to a sublimation printer. It's an Epson Workforce. Um, there are really expensive sawgrass um, printers that people buy for sublimation, but Epson is definitely the cheaper way to go. So I'm gonna do the bottom half 400 for one minute. And look at that, look how that turned out. I just love all and here's the land that I love, that I personalized with our stars. Turned out so cute. And God bless America. This is one of the $5 pillows from Dollar General that I didn't even have to unstuff. And here's the other side. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Look at those colors. I love the colors on this. It's just Next up is sublimation on these dry erase boards that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. So these are the dry erase easels that they have at the Dollar Tree. And these are what I tried on my previous video. And I had um, differences in sublimation from where there's a frame behind it and where there's not. So I'm figuring, hey, they're from the Dollar Tree. They're gonna break easily, right? So I go in with my spatula for my Cricut and I'm just carefully trying to take the frame off of the dry erase so that I can do sublimation onto the dry erase board and then reattach it to the little easel. That is my plan. <laughs> some of it's stuck good and some of it is popping off okay. I'm trying to get it all off in one piece. Without causing too much damage. And there we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay. So I'm trying to decide, yeah, I think I wanna use my Cricut Easy Press mat again for sure. So I am, want to make a patriotic sign that says USA. So I designed these letters on Canva and I'm gonna try doing one letter on each easel. So just cut that out and I'm gonna tape that down. Now this is the only letter that did not have tape damage and I'm thinking there is because I did not actually tape to the dry erase now that I look at that. So I'm gonna put down some wax paper and then I'm gonna go in with a sheet of copy paper because I have good luck with that. And I'm gonna go in for 400 degrees, one minute again. 
and we will see what we get. Okay, I lost some footage there, <laughs> clearly. Um, I My husband distracted me, that's my excuse. And I just kept going in with the second sign is gonna sublimate. We did it the first, same as the first, and I'm just working on the next frame, trying to take it off. And I, um, spoiler, it did work. <laughs> it was a success for that one. And so I got that board off and let's check on our S. And it looks good. There is a little bit of damage on the edges from the tape. So gotta be really careful with the tape and the sublimation. It did take some of the surface off. This frame really did not want to come off, so it came off in pieces. We're going to cut out our third letter and we'll sublimate that onto our last dry erase board. And this time I'm scared to use tape. I'm like, oh wait, that tape just messed that up. Maybe if I put wax paper on top of it first, no, that moves it. And then I'm like, Okay, I'm just going to use heat tape, but I'm going to use it like super sparingly. That's the final decision. Okay, covering it with my copy paper, going in for 400 degrees for one minute. And that is going to be the A for our USA signs. And they all turned out pretty good. I would say they could be brighter. I don't know if I would have sublimated longer if the images would be brighter, but they kind of go with what I was going for. So I have my frames that I want to reattach and I'm just kind of using my sanding block from the Dollar Tree to get some of the cardboard off that ripped off and I popped them off. Just trying to get them back on there as good as I can. And I am just going to try to attach those to the dry erase board with um, some hot glue. Okay, first I want to go in here and kind of touch up around the edges where the heat tape took off the white. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit of white chalk paint and just try to fix that because they were definitely a success besides that little bit of heat tape damage. Definitely the most successful thing that I think we made. The welcome to my garden sign turned out pretty good though. So just giving that a quick dry, giving it a second coat, and that should be good. I thought it made the images bigger than the sign, but now that I'm looking at them, I definitely um, did a quick measure on those because <laughs> there's a white line all the way around, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going in with my fancy Ryobi hot glue gun and trying to do a small bead of hot glue all the way around. I find that it releases a lot of hot glue, so I'm trying to refine my technique there. And I just lay that on there and glue it down. This is the one that the middle part broke off, so I'm just going to glue that back down where it should be. And these signs are super light, so I'm thinking that it'll be fine. Definitely enough support. So going in with some glue again. Need a refill. <laughs> and laying it down on the sign. I find that the first technique that I used worked better where you lay the dry erase board onto the frame instead of doing it vice versa because I had some issues. The side did not seem to be glued down. So I had to apply a little bit more hot glue because I really want that side to stay attached. And there's our A. Okay, last one. I kind of went too far down with the glue 
on this one. <laughs> I had to go back and try to get the glue off. The ends of the legs there and just sitting it on there and pushing it down until it gets dry. And that one had a little bit of tape damage as well. So just gonna touch that up. And I'm just trying to peel off that extra hot glue that I accidentally got on the legs. And then I realized that middle part is not quite down. So I just put a little bit more hot glue gun, hot glue under that with my hot glue gun. Make sure the easel part still moves. And we have our USA. You guys, and our USA signs. I'm really happy with the USA signs. I think I, for real, will display those with my patriotic decorations this summer. So what do you guys think? Next up is sublimation on a picture frame that I got on clearance at Target. I'm going to try sublimating this frame that I got on clearance for a dollar in the art section at Target recently. And I'm going to try to not emboss the wood, but sublimate the wood. So I am taking the back out and taking the glass out. Now, I don't know this kind of wood, whether it will sublimate, sublimate or not. So this is kind of an experiment. I have no idea what I'm doing there. Okay, so here is my frame and I printed out the pattern on the sublimation paper, but it's eight and a half by 11 and I didn't really measure and it's not big enough. So I'm gonna um, have to do it sideways and then do two sheets and then try to match the pattern up. So just made it slightly more complicated. So I'm cutting off the white parts just so I know where the edges are and I can line that up and we can get that sublimated onto the wood. So I'm just attaching it to the frame with some heat tape for sublimation that I got on Amazon. And I am gonna use my Cricut Easy Press 2 to sublimate that. I got it on Cricut, so I am fixing it. And the setting that I use is 400 degrees for one minute. So I got it on there, I think how I like it. I'm gonna cut off the extra so it doesn't really sublimate on the side. It will do that, I've noticed, when working with wood. And I am going in, and I decide it's not gonna cover the whole thing. 400 for one minute. And here I am doing the same on the other side. And the reveal, it worked. Doesn't that look cool? So in the meantime, I printed out another sheet, the same thing, and I'm giving it a trim. This was the most challenging part of the project, I would think, is trying to line up this pattern because when I originally designed this, I did not plan that. So I have like, you know, the pattern going off the bottom of the design. And so I'm just kind of studying the design and thinking about what needs to happen <laughs> to give me a seamless transi transition. So I kind of see where I'm thinking, where I want that line to be. And I give it a cut and see if that is going to make sense. Cut off the side to make it line up. And I think I have a winner. So I'm gonna attach the bottom part to the frame with the sublimation tape. Trim off the extra parts. And it actually does fit. I don't know why I did the first one in two parts. So 400 for one minute. And this is our final results. And I love how it turned out. I'm just gonna leave the sides the natural wood. 
I can't really tell what they had on the original. They called theirs an embossed wood. I'm thinking it, maybe it was some kind of fabric, but I really don't, I feel that mine didn't need that. I'm just gonna go in with some of this flat clear acrylic to seal it. I thought maybe it might bring out the pattern, might make it last longer. I don't know if this step was really necessary, but I had it, so I did it. And isn't that pattern really cool? I love how it turned out. And I'm going in with my heat gun and giving it a dry. And I have a very special picture that I plan on putting in this. You know, it will be Mother's Day soon and I lost my mother two years ago. So I have a beautiful picture of her when she was young that I printed out and I am going to put in the frame. And I'm gonna have this up to celebrate Mother's Day and it will make me smile. She's so young and beautiful in this picture. The frame was a little mucky, so I'm trying to get it good and dry and clean before I put my picture in. And this is just a picture I printed out on regular paper, but it was black and white, so it actually um, turned out pretty good. And I am just putting the back, back on my frame and we did it. Are you ready to see the final results of all? And here is my version, a sublimation wood frame with a beautiful picture of my mother. What do you guys think? This project was sublimation on the little chunky wood stars that are available from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, so they were a dollar a piece. Um, their project was $20 for two stars and mine is going to be $2. So wonderful deal. I'm just using the spackle from the Dollar Tree to fill in the holes. I'm wondering if I would have used like wood fill if it would have turned out a little better. Um, I don't know. But that's what I had handy. So I'm just filling in that little hole because I don't want these stars to hang. I want them to sit just like their patriotic block stars. And the process that I'm gonna to use to make this today is sublimation. Sublimations, you have to use a special printer and special ink, and it sublimates the ink into the whatever you're doing. This time it's gonna be the wood. And I'm not gonna treat these at all. I'm just gonna go straight on raw wood. Now, if you don't have a sublimation printer, that's fine. You can totally do this. Um, I just thought this might be a fun technique to use sublimation on. And so I'm just giving them a quick sand. They were all a little rough. And then here I'm going to take my heat tape that's used for sublimation and I'm going to go around and tape off the edges. The reason why I'm doing this is because the designs I printed out a little larger on squares and I've noticed that on wood when you sublimate that colors can go around on the sides. Now on the original Patriotic Block Stars from Kirkland's um, they had the raw wood signs, sides I'm sorry. And so I wanted to do the same, but I don't want that bleeding to occur. So here is my first pattern. It's close to the original. It's not the same. It's like drawings of the white stars, but it's the big stars and the little stars mixed in a random pattern. And I put that together on Canva and printed that out. And then I'm just gonna put my sublimation paper on there and I'm gonna go in with my Cricut Easy Press at 400 degrees for one minute. While that's sublimating, I'm just going ahead and getting a head start on my second wood block. And I don't know if it's because I kind of had it wet with the baby wipe. I had a little color variation in that. I don't know if you can see that, but there was a little color variation in that. It works, but it turned out pretty good. So the second one, I'm going to go in and do the same thing going to use the heat tape. The reason I'm using the heat tape is because I think it's the only thing that's going to hold up to the heat from sublimation. It's really super hot. So just getting that one ready. And for this one, I just took the American flag and I just cropped out the stripes because that's all I wanted. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on there um, going sideways like the original. And um, this time I'm going to use a cover sheet. So that's just a piece of copy paper. 
400 for one minute again, and maybe I won't have any problems like I did on the first one with the color variation. Can you see that? It's, there's just a little bit, it could be from the wood, I don't know. So 400 for one minute, and this one turned out like almost a perfect. It's a little bit off center, but I love it. So there we go, $2 versus $20 at Kirkland's. We have our patriotic black stars. And then um, I'm gonna go in and seal this with just some spray matte acrylic. I don't know if it's really necessary. I do know that when I sublimate on canvases, it brings the colors out a little more. I think it did make the colors pop a little bit more and it'll probably make it more durable. So I just sprayed that on and I am giving it a dry. I was thinking too, it could maybe mask the uh, coloring variation on the blue star. And I don't know, it, it, it turned out okay. I like them, I'm definitely gonna use them for sure. So I'm really going over that, giving that one once from the Dollar Tree. So $2 is my cost. And then I use sublimation. You could always use tape, paint those stripes on, put down. And last but not least, sublimation on a wood round that I picked up for about $10 at Home Depot. My most recent project. Wood round, um, they have over in their lumber department. Um, I think it was about $10. I can't find the receipt, so I can't remember for sure, but I think it's right around that price point. And I'm gonna use this to make a patriotic, um, large wall hanging for my entryway. My first inclination was I was gonna use it on my front door, but I actually ended up using it um, right inside my front door, like above like my entryway table, and I love how it turned out. Okay, so first I am going to put the Telkin family um, on the wood with sublimation. Now, if you don't have sublimation, you could always use Cricut to make stencils. Um, if you don't have a Cricut, you could always hand paint. Um, I was kind of going for like, you know, like a wood burned look. And I thought it would be way easier to try it with sublimation. Now, I did not treat this wood at all. So this is kind of an experiment. And I was thinking, you know, if this doesn't work, then I can always paint over the wood round and make something really cool. I have done a wood round that I started with painting and I made Cricut stencils for that turned out really cool. And so I am just using um, heat tape to put my sublimation paper down. I went a little crazy on the size here. I got a new sublimation printer that prints big. And so <laughs> it may have been a little too big, but I'm determined I'm going to fit it on this sign. And so I'm just going to use some copy paper to cover that. Go in with my Cricut Easy Press 2 at 400 degrees for one minute. And you can see how that transferred through on that paper. And so I'm going to get a clean sheet of copy paper. And I am going to do the rest of our last name. And I'm just really hoping this works. Um, I have sublimated on like more of a, a birch or a very um, solid color raw wood and had luck sometimes, sometimes not. So this wood, I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm just kind of going for it. So 400 for a minute again. And I can already see that there's probably gonna be some problems there. It looks like there was a lot of ghosting and bleeding um, around the K in our name. And so I'm a little concerned at this point. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull it off and look, and yes. So I don't know if there was water or sap inside the wood. Something came out in those areas and interfered um, with a clean sublimation there. So I'm like, oh man, how am I gonna fix that? But I decided to keep going. So I kinda, I printed out more stuff than I ended up fitting on the sign, but I just put, you know, our last name and the family, and I do end up um, putting the established date on there too. And 400 for one minute, again, for the word family. And that and family turned out fantastic. 
And then I'm doing Established 2002. And I just kind of guessed on the arch on that. So I'm just kind of cutting that and getting that to fit and attaching that down. So sublimation, you can do it on so many different things. You do need a special sublimation printer. I use an Epson Workforce and a sublimation ink and sublimation paper. To get this to work, if you're curious, it's a lot of fun. Um, it is a little pricey to get started. My first sublimation printer, I just happened to already have the right kind of printer, but um, I just got a new one and it prints these super large prints. And so I'm really excited to experiment with some large projects here. So every time I'm pressing, I'm just going in at 400 for one minute and I kind of didn't get the sides here. I'm trying to go in there with my little mini press, but I had that thing turned up all the way and I, I don't think it gets hot enough like the Easy Press too. I think that's why the original Easy Press doesn't work is because it doesn't get hot enough for sublimation. And so I'm just gonna finish it up with my Cricut Easy Press. And it looks really good, except for the bleeding um, on the last name there. And the wood looked really good um, and was pretty smooth all over, except the edges were really rough. And so I'm just going in with a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and just trying to smooth that up a bit on the sides. And a quick go over on the, on the front as well. Then I'm like, how on earth am I going to fix this? <laughs> um, so my idea is to find a paint that is close to the wood color. Um, and I did find a chalk paint that was really close. And I'm just going to try to touch that up and hope that it doesn't interfere with how I want to do the sign. So what I'm thinking is... I have our name on there and then I want to try to stain um, the wood, but I also want you to still be able to read our name. And so I am touching this up with paint and I'm just hoping that it takes the stain. And so I think this project would have been a lot faster for me had that not happened because I do spend a lot of time trying to fix just a couple little errors there on the sign. Okay, so now I want to make my own stain. And so I'm gonna try um, half acrylic paint, half water to make my own stain. So first um, I want to have the top left corner um, be like the like American flag um and blue so i'm just using a couple pieces of copy paper and some painters tape to um tape that off so that i don't get any stain on that section of the sign and then i'm going to use that same um painters tape from the dollar tree um to try to put some stripes on it like a flag. Now, it's hard to go around the curved sides with, with this tape. So I did buy some special like automotive tape that goes for curved surfaces, but it wasn't as wide as this painter's tape from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna kinda go for it and hope that it works. And then I'm just, I just continued that line all the way over. I just used a little piece of the tape for a spacer so that my um, stripes will be even. And you can reuse that little scrap piece of tape. And I am just gonna cover the rest of the sign with stripes like it would have um, on an American flag. Now I do try to get the tape as tight as I can around the sides. I, I do end up with bleeding probably because I'm not using the best um, painter's tape and it didn't fit tight enough around the sides, but nothing that I wasn't able to repair. So 
I tore off a short sheet. I don't know what I was thinking there because I need a long piece of tape here for this stripe. And then I'm just gonna continue that all the way down towards the bottom. And the reason I'm using two spacers here is to make sure that my line is straight and everything is even. And I think I'm just going to leave the um, raw wood for the white stripe. So I'm gonna go in and try to do a red stripe and I'm just trying to get everything taped down. I'm gonna tape down that paper for the corner and I am ready to make a stain. So I'm using this candy apple red paint I got at the Target and I am, it's a little tiny bottle so I'm just gonna make it easy on myself and dump in the whole bottle and then fill that bottle up with water. So I have a one-to-one -one. And I'm just gonna mix that up and I have stain. Isn't that easy? I have never made my own stain like this before. So um, Google is my friend. <laughs> so it said one-to-one -one acrylic paint to water. So that's what we're gonna try. And I'm just gonna use my foam roller. I thought that would be a quick, easy way to get those stripes on there. And so I'm just gonna kinda go for it. And when you do this, that wood is raw and it's pretty receptive to the stain. And so I only have to do one coat, so it was pretty easy. So I'm just doing the bottom half, kind of going around the sides with my roller. And making sure that I have good coverage there. Now I'm just gonna go over with a paper towel and I am just kind of wiping off the excess stain um, to see what we're left with. And you can see through it like I'd hoped. I do notice some problems there though. The areas that I touched up with the chalk paint are not taking the stain. So that's not good. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go in and now paint the red stripes there on the top half. And then I'm gonna go in with a paper towel and wipe off all the excess. And that is just a super easy way to make a colored stain. And then I'm gonna use that cloth that has the stain on, stain on it just to get around the edges to make sure that all the exposed sides have color on their stripes. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure it's dry. I'm just gonna go over it real quick with my heat gun. And it is time to take off the tape. And I get fairly good stripes. There is a little bleeding you can see there and mainly on the sides. And since I do have that same color paint, um, chalk paint as the wood, that's gonna be easy to touch up. So I like that you can see the sublimation through the stain. That was kind of the look I'm going for. And then I want to um, get all this paper and tape off. And then I should be able to go in and do the top quadrant in blue. And that's when I noticed that, you know, the areas that I painted did not stain. So my plan is to use that same color of red paint and just try to touch that up to see if I can um, hide it. And when I was watching this back, I, you know, I had to do our last name in two different pieces. So I don't know, you know, sublimating twice there um, in the middle of our last name may have caused it as well. But I'm just going in and he touching it up with that chalk paint to fix all the bleeding 
on my stripes on the edges. And again, if I would have used that um, automotive tape from Walmart they have for the curved surfaces, that probably would not have happened. And honestly, you can't really tell there was bleeding. Uh, that touch up of the chalk paint totally um, made that look really sharp along all the sides. Now I'm gonna tape off the upper quadrant there. And just with two pieces of tape. And I'm gonna do the same thing there that I did for the stripes. I'm gonna make my own stain. Now, my house is very coastal and I really love this color of blue. And then I'm like, wait a minute, that's chalk paint. I cannot use chalk paint, I have to use acrylic. So I'm using this pretty turquoise color that I got at Target. And I'm not gonna need very much, so I'm just gonna pour out a little and pour out uh, about the same amount of water and mix that up with just a foam brush. And I think that's gonna be plenty. And so, I've been using um, more of the turquoise um, or agave and the chalk paint and a lot of my decorations. I love how it looks with the red and white stripes and it really goes nicely with my house. And when you make things yourself, you know, you can custom make it to your home and make it exactly the colors that you need it to be. And so that's what I'm doing here, but you could always do this with like, you know, the more royal blue or navy color. So I am just going in now with a towel and wiping out the excess like I did for the stripes. And again, I have areas there where the stain didn't take because um, where I touched up the paint. So I'm thinking I probably shouldn't have touched up the paint. Um, I probably should have just tried to touch it up towards the end because it seems like I'm having to go in and fix it a lot. So I'm just going in with that straight paint and trying to neatly touch that up, but I still want you to be able to read the letters underneath the stain. Okay, time to take the tape off. And it looks pretty good. Just a little bit of paint came out there on that side, but nothing that didn't wipe off. I kind of like taping my tape off um, when it's still kind of wet. And again, I'm touching those letters up again. Now, I was trying to think how I could put white stars on that part, and the only way I could have really done that is if I would have put down like Cricut stars that I cut out before I applied the stain, which I did not do. And then I'm like, if I paint any stars up there, then you're not going to be able to read um, the name through it. So I ended up leaving it with no stars. I thought that was going to be plain, but you know, I, I kind of liked it. Um, it's kind of more abstract. And so I let it dry. Now I'm going in here and you guessed it, touching up my letters again. That one little thing caused me so much grief. <laughs> and then if you know me, I am going to uh, distress this. So I'm gonna use some ivory chalk paint and this chippy brush from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go over the whole thing and give it that weathered, beachy, um, aged look. And it made the sign even lighter. It, it definitely looks like it's weathered and that it could be like an older sign. And I really like how that turned out. Then I'm going in with just a baby wipe and wiping off the extra paint that I'm using to distress it. Kind of just going all over with that. And I let that dry and then I am going in and sanding it. And you can see how faded and worn um, it looks with the combination of the stain and the white distressing. And even with the name um, being back 
um, behind it. That makes it look old too, but if you um, are at this part now and you don't have your name on it, you could always go in with your Cricut and you could use like a gray um, paint and stencil and kind of get the same effect. Now I'm going to seal this with this polycrylic. My initial plan was to use this on my um, front door. I ended up thinking it was a little too big and heavy and clunky to um, hit off the door every single time we open and shut it. And so I ended up using it inside and I love how it turned out, but it's probably a good idea to seal it with a polycrylic anyway, because I want this piece to last from year to year. I just really love how it turned out. So I went over with a thin coat with a paintbrush and the polycrylic, and I'm also going around the sides and getting that sealed. Um, I looked up online to make sure that I could use my heat gun. I didn't want to interfere with this sealing process and it said that that was fine. So I am going in and trying to help that dry faster. Anything I can do to speed up a project, I always like to do for sure. And once I get that good and dry, I am going in with another thin coat of the polycrylic. And this is the water-based water, uh, polycrylic. It dries really fast and it's really easy um, to clean up after. Does not really make a mess at all. And then I'm going in and getting that started on the drying process. Now, when I was looking at this sign, I'm thinking, am I done? Is there more? Do I need something? So I took it to my husband. He says, you need a rope around it. And I'm like, no, I don't need a rope around it. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I do need a rope around it. So I went and found some of this nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree. And it ended up one package was plenty enough plenty enough to go around the 18 inch wood ring. And so I'm trying to plan that out. I'm like, if I can just glue this to the edges, it's gonna give it a great nautical feel and it's gonna kind of be the finishing touch. So kudos to my husband, Mark, for coming up with a great idea. So I am just kind of looping the end of it and just tying that into a knot to give me kind of a cute little knot that kind of looks like a, I don't know, my nautical knots, maybe a sailor's knot, some kind of cool knot. And then I am just gonna wind the rest of it around the sign and I'm gonna use that rope to actually hang it. So it looks like the one piece of rope is gonna be almost exactly um, the length that I need. And I'm just cutting off the plastic tape that is on the end of these nautical ropes. Whenever I see these at Dollar Tree, I pick them up two or three at a time because I love them. They are great, and especially with a coastal house, um, I use them for so much. You can also unwind them into three smaller ropes and use them for different kinds of projects. So I am using my hot glue gun and I am just gluing on the first part of my rope there. I'm gonna have a joint up there at the top that hopefully I can hide. Now, I really wanted um, this to be attached really well to the wood. And so I do work slowly and I go around and only do small portions at a time. I'm applying the hot glue um, to the um, inside of the rope and then trying to um, put that on the wood until it starts to dry and then moving on to the next area. The wood round is actually pretty heavy, so I was concerned because I, I don't want it to fall apart. I really want the rope to be attached well on every single part. So I'm just taking my time and I am using um, the little pink things from the Dollar Tree on my fingers to make sure that I don't burn myself here because this hot glue gun is amazing, but it gets the glue just smoking hot. It's crazy. And I am going around. And I'm so glad that my husband suggested that I needed a rope around it. I mean, 
I really don't think the piece would have been finished without this touch. And I, and it's functional because it also serves as the hanger, which I was trying to decide how I was going to hang it. And since I stretched it as I glued, it was a little bit too long. So I'm just kind of cutting that to size. And then here where the two ends of the rope meet, I'm just trying, gonna have to be kind of fussy and trim it. And I'm just gonna use hot glue to try to make that kind of look like one seamless rope. I'm using my silicone um, little wand from the Dollar Tree and the little cots on my fingers to try to get that down. Now, I'm concerned I don't want the sign to fall off of the rope I'm using for the hanger. So I tried staples, but I don't think they were long enough. So I'm just going in with some little nails and just nailing the rope in to the top of the sign just to give it some more um, security. If that doesn't hold, I'll probably go in with um, a screw. But here it is in my entryway as soon as you walk in. And I absolutely love how this turned out. It's a perfect decoration for Memorial Day and for the 4th of July. I really hope you've enjoyed all of these sublimation home decor tutorials. If you haven't, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Until next time, bye!